Buckle up, my fabulous people, because we're about to take a ride on an emotional roller coaster like no other. Imagine life hitting you with a curveball. One moment you're just a regular dad on a sunny day, and the next you're plunged into a heart wrenching nightmare. Hold on to your hats because this is the after. Hello, fabulous people, it's your girl Wizzy. And if you're new to my corner of the internet, welcome to the fabulous Isabella Banks YouTube channel where we dive deep into the latest buzz, especially when it involves Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan. So make yourselves at home and let's dive into the good stuff. Today, we're diving into a spectacular film directed by Missan Harriman and starring the incredible David Oyelowo. And trust me, you wouldn't want to miss this one. Now, the after takes you on a breathtaking journey through grief, healing and unexpected connections. It's a heartfelt exploration of the raw emotions men experience, but often keep hidden. This one had me in tears, and I can't wait to share all the feels with you. So let's get started. So you've got Dayo, right? Who is David Oyelowo's character in the movie? A career-driven dad, right? He's all busy, but a near-miss bicycle accident reminds him of the value of family time, especially for his daughter's dance performance. But hold up, life's about to flip the script. So guys, it looks like he picked his daughter up from somewhere and he was going to hand her over to her mom for her to take to school for a school dance performance. So as they meet up, boom, a knife-wielding maniac shows up. This man stabs his daughter and his wife, crazed with terror, watches her daughter go over the rail. And guess what? jumps over the rail to go save her daughter. Mm. It's funny that while the people around him were struggling with him to capture the man who was stabbing everyone, it seems almost like he alone saw his daughter jump over the rail so that it had the effect of, even though there were so many people around him, he was alone in the grief he, and shock he was experiencing. It's a raw look at men in grief, the stuff we don't often see. And through it all, David's journey teaches us that even in the darkest times, we've got to find a way to carry on, carry on with life, yeah. It also teaches us to be a bit compassionate when we meet people, because we never know what someone is battling with when you meet them. David Oyelowo was absolutely brilliant in this shot. Did you guys notice that as part of his job as a driver, Dayo actually takes in a lot from the conversations that people are having in his car as he drives them around? They could be happy, they could be sad, but this particular event, which caused him to break down a bit, also caused him to expel a lot in return, especially when he got to places where he was alone. So we see the part where he's in the car, listening to the news, confirming that the attacker has been found guilty of murder. This is about a year after the incident happened. He is obviously receiving treatment for maybe depression and doesn't seem to be able to manage his doctor's appointments, their phone calls, or even meeting with his doctor, which is quite typical of people going through depression or who have experienced some kind of trauma. I love the part with David in the car and the memories of what has happened in his face as we watch him listen to his wife's voice on his voicemail. We watch him in pain after he has listened to her voice and we hear the sounds he makes after he listened to the voicemail message. His pain is so raw and yet it's amazing how something so monumental could be going on with a person and yet how oblivious people are to the pain of others. The casting of his wife in the movie is brilliant as well. She just seems like she's a very loving, laid back and nurturing woman. So David tries to pick up his life and hunts for a new direction. And one of these days seems to be a family that he picked up as a fare for in his taxi. This family seems to be consumed with bickering back and forth so much that they left their daughter in the car when they arrived at their destination. When the girl's parents were arguing in the car, David's character looked at the little girl who was with the family. So it was a mother, father, and a little girl who was a bit older than his daughter when she passed. 
And I think that there was a connection there. She completely felt his empathy and felt his need for connection as well. On her part, she was grateful for his understanding. There just seemed to be something that passed between the two of them to the point that when they arrived at their destination, she didn't want to come out of the car. She had come out, taken a few steps, turned back and came to give him a hug from behind. This had the effect of completely rocking him to the core. I think as a parent, you would also be worried if your child came out of the car to give a cab driver a hug from behind. But it was this kind gesture that got to him, that finally broke him in pieces, got him to perhaps cry like he hadn't been able to cry since his daughter and wife passed away. On one hand, I'm sure his thoughts were like, Look at me who loved my daughter so much and I lost her to senseless violence. And here are these people who have their daughter right in front of them, fighting in front of her over irrelevancies. There is a sense that the message in the film is that we can recover from trauma though when we receive simple acts of kindness. Often the key to unlocking healing to our trauma is an expression of love. There is also an opportunity to see men in grief. We often see women's grief on display but male grief is more contained, which I think sometimes has the effect of choking men up and turning toxic. In the film's final moments, Dio returns to his car and leans against the door frame. His chest rises and falls and he looks towards the sky. Some audiences might tie a religious or spiritual element to that glance, but the light shines on him is a stunning moment. I think this movie will be great for people who have experienced loss, who may be appreciative of the unspoken signals which exist, which show that other people have had similar experiences and understand what they're going through. And that is going to be all right. Even if their lives don't return to what it was before the incident happened, but at least it's going to be fine. I also think this movie would be great for a man who finds it difficult to express emotion to let him know that it's okay. It's okay to do whatever he needs to do to express himself. In fact, you know what? <laughs> a great prank would be to tie a man to a chair and put this movie in front of him, especially one that finds it difficult to express emotion and make him watch it and carry on as though nothing happened and let him find his way to expressing how he feels. The movie kind of reminds me of Prince Harry of, and the pain and loneliness and depression he described in despair. But saying that, at the same time, we can't stand a verbose man. So maybe Misson's next movie needs to be on what an emotionally balanced man looks like and what he needs to do to get there. <laughs> I just noticed while I was doing this review that they don't really talk that much about him feeling shattered over the loss of his wife. His primary focus was how he felt over the loss of his daughter. And if you think about it, he was actually with his daughter when the movie began. Heartbreaking as the movie was, and I cried all three times that I watched the movie, I was glad to see it. It helps to know that men feel pain in that way and what that pain can often look like. It's nice to know that a simple kind gesture may be the thing that brings healing to the man in pain and that patience may be required to get there. I think it was smart of Mason to start off his career in moving pictures with a short. I hear he has a documentary in the works. I can't wait to see what he comes up with for that one. So guys, I will end the review here. What was your favorite part of the movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm thinking about reviewing The Crown when it begins on November the 19th. Would you guys be watching? Would you like me to do a recap when this season begins? Let me know and we'll see how it goes. I'm also glad to announce that the movie won Best Live Action from Holly Shorts. It was amazing to me that there was so much packed into 18 minutes. Well done, Misson. I'm all about supporting those who support the Sussexes, so let's support Misson by following him on Twitter and Instagram if we're not doing that already. Let's give the movie a review on IMDb um, website. You know, the haters work so hard to bring down the projects of the Sussexes and their supporters, so we have to work hard to 
lift them up in return so that there will be a balance. I will leave the links to the Twitter, Instagram, and INDB website page in the description box of this video. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, stay focused, keep thriving, and keep shining. Bye!